our merciful and loving Father in heaven. You have blessed your service again, our Father, to be able to stand before you and to thank you for all of the blessings that you continue to grant unto us. And to thank you, Father, for giving us the choice and giving us the understanding that we need that we may be able to choose the right choice. And that is to serve and to glorify the most holy name. Father, as we listen to your holy words this evening, we pray that you would please open up our hearts and our minds of understanding so that we may be able to understand your truth and we will be able to become stronger in our faith to continue on serving and glorifying the most holy name. We pray, our Father, that you would please look into all of the households of your servants, wherever they may be, and grant unto them your blessings. Those that are sick, Father, we pray that you please heal them as it is our holy will. Those that are bedridden, we ask you, Father, to raise them up if it is our will. And those of our brethren that are being oppressed, persecuted, and then hiding, and those that are in jail, we ask you, Father, to strengthen them in their everyday life and continue to guide them too, so that, Father, we all may be able to overcome any obstacles that we encounter in this life, and we will be able to go on fulfilling our duties and serving and glorifying our most holy name. Father, you have blessed our brother this evening and will teach your words, and we ask you that you would please continue to guide him with your Holy Spirit, that he may be able to teach your words with clarity so that all of us that are listening will be strengthened in our faith to go on to serve you until the end of our lives. We truly believe, our Father, that you will be with us throughout our Bible study, that you will make us all attentive to your holy words so that we may be able to withstand all of the things that come our way in life and continue on to serve you until the end of our lives. We truly believe that you've heard our prayer, that you've forgiven us for any shortcomings that we have, because we ask everything in the name of thy son, Jesus. Amen. Beloved brothers and sisters, we are very fortunate because despite everything that is happening in this world, we are among those chosen by our Lord God to remain faithful in the teachings that we have received. While others have already walked a different path, others may have grown cold in their faith. Others probably took another direction or have completely stopped and turned away. We, despite the troubles, trials, sorrows that we go through, we still firmly believe that following the teachings of our Lord God is truly important, not only in our sojourn, but most especially in the attainment of our salvation come Judgment Day. Now, worshiping, praising our Lord God, being that it is the most important for us to do, we also fulfill the second most important commandment of our Lord God, and that is to love others the way we love ourselves. It is easy for us to do things that would benefit us because those are the things that would fulfill our needs and our wants. But when we think about others and what they need, when we think about helping others, especially when they cannot help themselves, 
this is what gives conflict to other people because they are not able to put others' interest above theirs or they find it harder to do things for other people when they think that they themselves are lacking in so many things. If we remember in the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ, when a young man who is rich asked him how it is to attain salvation, and our Lord Jesus Christ gave him the things that he needed to do, and when he said that, I've already done that, and our Lord Jesus Christ said, then, you know, sell everything that you have and give it to the poor or those in need. That's when he left sorrowful because he is a rich man. Therefore, when we have to sacrifice or give up things that we find valuable or have worked hard for, for the interest or benefit of other people, some find it harder to do and think that it is no longer important, especially in our fulfillment of God's teachings and his commandments. That is why in our lesson, let us ask, when should we do good to other people? Let us read what is written here in Matthew chapter 19 and the verses 19. This is what is recorded. Honor your father and mother, and love your neighbor as yourself. That is, unselfishly seek the best or higher good for others. Now, we all know that the commandment of our Lord God that is taught by our Lord Jesus Christ is to honor our father and mother. And probably that is something that we can say, oh, that's obvious. We all know that that we should honor our father and our mother. But then when it comes to loving our neighbor the way we love ourselves or loving others the way we love ourselves, it becomes a question mark. We come to think of it as something that depends on different people on how they want to love others or help others. That is why it is defined here in the verse that we should unselfishly seek the best or higher good for others. So if we want something for ourselves, much more wanting something that is better or the best or higher good for others. And when we do this, brothers and sisters, according to the Bible, it should, it should be an unselfish act, not something that we're doing because it also gives us benefit or it, we're serving our own interests by helping others. No, it should be an unselfish act to seek what is best or higher good for other people. So how often do we need to do this? Is this a one-off that we can do? Or is there a certain schedule that we should do this? Or a certain time of the day, the month, the year that we should do this? Let us ask the Bible here in Galatians chapter 6 in the verses 10, according to Apostle Paul. So then as often as we have the chance, we should do good to everyone, and especially to those who belong to our family in the faith. That is why, brothers and sisters, if we're not able to fulfill our own schedules, things to do every day, this, we don't need to keep a schedule for this. We don't need to put it in a calendar. Because the Bible says, as often as we have the chance, every opportune chance that we have, we should do good, not to, only to people that we like, not only for um, people that are easy to help. No, we should do good to everyone, especially to those who belong to our faith, our family in the faith. Now, is this something that is optional? Of course, we cannot be forced to do something, but how does our Lord God look at those who do good to everyone, 
and those who try not to do good to everyone, or they are able to do good to others, but instead of doing it, they hesitate, they hold back, or they withhold. Let's read what's written in Proverbs chapter 3 and the verses 27 up to 28. Do not withhold good from those who deserve it when it's in your power to help them. If you can help your neighbor now, don't say, come back tomorrow, and then I'll help you. So it's not something that, that we should say, especially those people who need our help. Especially if we have the power, the means to help others. Now, what hinders other people from helping? Probably it's human nature to survive. What, why does it mean that we have to survive? It means that in, in doing so, when we, when we think of the things that we need, we say to ourselves, why am I going to help him when I myself also need this? When I also need to do this. That is why, brothers and sisters, it is important for us to understand that if we have the capacity or the power to help, let's help. Let's not wait for tomorrow. And, or let's not say that, you know, come back again, especially if we can do it now. Beloved brothers and sisters, if we truly understand why our Lord God wants us to help others in need, then we will not hesitate. We will not hold back. If we think that the things that we have now are the things that we have simply because we are better, simply because that we did it in our own strength, our own power, then we will withhold it. Then we can say, hey, I did it myself. So I have no obligation to give it to you or to give it to others or to help others. But let us always remember, brothers and sisters, everything in this world that we have is not solely or purely ours. The things that we consider valuable, the things that we have earned, even though we did our part to, to earn them, remember, all of these blessings come from our Lord God. Even the breath that we have the strength, the life, the health, the knowledge, all of these things comes from our Lord God in heaven. And if we are to share the blessings that have been given to us by our Lord God, it is merely to give thanks to our Lord God. So what should every true servant of our Lord Jesus Christ have in common? Let us read 1 Peter chapter 3 in the verse is 8. Finally, all of you be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. So those followers of our Lord Jesus Christ have one thing in common. And these are those, those things. It's not actually one thing. A lot of things in common. Many people can say that they are members of the Church of Christ, they are part of the body of Christ, that they can claim that they are the only ones who will be saved. But if they do not possess or even show it as their attributes or act on these things, then they are merely claiming all of those things. Because according to the Bible, all of those who are followers of our Lord Jesus Christ should be like-minded. They should be sympathetic. They should love one another, be compassionate and humble. So what is sympathetic? My daughter here is asking me what is sympathetic. It's a very co complicated word for a lot of people, even compassionate. So she's actually raising her hand saying, what is sympathetic? What is compassionate? So what is sympathetic and what is compassionate? So. Let's find the description, compassion. Compassionate comes from the root word compassion or passion. Compassion 
is a feeling of deep sympathy and sorrow for another who is stricken by misfortune, accompanied by a strong desire to elevate the suffering. I think the words used here are more complicated than the original word we're trying to find out. <laughs> but compassionate, when you say compassionate, you're showing compassion. And you have that feeling of deep sympathy. Now, sympathy is something that we'll define after, but having a deep feeling of sympathy and sorrow for another who is stricken by misfortune, somebody who is down on his luck, somebody who is poor, somebody who is uh, sick or probably in trouble. But it's not only having that feeling of sympathy or sorrow for that person. There should be, it should be accompanied by that strong desire to elevate the suffering or to help, to help that person who is stricken by misfortune. Now, sympathetic comes from the root word sympathy. And it is described here that if you are sympathetic to someone who is in a bad situation, you are kind to them and show that you understand their feelings. Because there are a lot of people who may be sorrowful. There are people who are problematic. They are in conflict. They have troubles. They're, they're going through trials or adverse uh, situations in their life. They don't, probably don't have anybody to talk to. Or probably they don't have anybody to ask help from. Or they're in a situation that they feel helpless, that they feel powerless, and they're just about to lose hope. That is why a true Christian will always show compassion and sympathy towards others. And by doing that, we are not only feeling what they are feeling, but we are doing something to help them. It's so easy to say that, oh, I understand that we have our brothers and sisters in the Philippines who stood up for the truth, defending the faith, and now they are in hiding. They are still being persecuted and oppressed. Probably a lot of people know that already. There are those brothers and sisters who are in jail. But if we are truly sympathetic, knowing that they are in that situation for many years now, that they are separated from their loved ones. Their lives for many years have been disrupted. They don't have a livelihood. Even their loved ones are living in fear, constantly being hunted down, persecuted and oppressed. Are we just going to feel sorry for them? Show pity to them? Being sympathetic and compassionate as uh, advice and admonished by the apostles and our Lord Jesus Christ means that we feel for them and we do our best to help them out. That strong desire to elevate their suffering. So that is what a true Christian will always show, especially to those who are in need. So if ever we do help them out, if ever we do recognize their suffering, their troubles, their trials, and we do our best to help them, is it just merely to help them? Is there, what does our Lord Jesus Christ set as guidelines or conditions in order for us to do our part in helping those who are in need and at the same time doing it in accordance to the teachings of our Lord God in heaven? Let's read Matthew. Chapter 6 and the verse is 2. So whenever you give to the poor and do acts of kindness, do not blow a trumpet before you to advertise it as the hypocrites do, like actors acting out a role in a synagogue, in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be honored and recognized and praised by men. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, they already have their reward in full. Now, this is the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ to his disciples so that when they do follow the teachings, which is to help those who are in need, they will do it in accordance to the teachings of our Lord God. 
and how is it done? Whenever we give to the poor, whenever we fulfill our duty to show acts of kindness, it should not be to show off so that others will see. It's like, according to the Bible, blowing a trumpet before you as a form of advertising that, hey, look at me, I'm helping. Hey, this is a picture of me. Hey, this is a video of me. Hey, this is, I'm doing this so that you will recognize and praise me as doing good to others. That is not the proper and biblical way of helping others in need. So when we do it, it should not be in a way that we are like acting out a role so that others may see it and we may be honored and recognized and praised by men. So how do we accord ourselves if it is not to show it off? Because there are some people who are just probably proud of what they're doing and they're probably sharing it so that others would be inspired. You would know the difference when you see somebody doing acts of kindness. You would know if it is a way of showing off and you would also feel it if it was just a sincere gesture. But let's read, continue reading what's written here in Matthew 6, 3 up to 4. And let's ask our Lord Jesus Christ how he explained why he mentioned that. But when you give to the poor and do acts of kindness, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Give in complete secrecy so that your charitable acts will be done in secret and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. So it is not actually what's important is that other people know it or see it. What is truly important is that God knows that we are following what he commands. And that is to love others, to help those who are in need. And when we are able to fulfill that, even if it's done in secret, our Lord God will know. Our Lord God will reward us or bless us for the things that we do, especially when we help those who are in need. What does fulfill mean? Fulfill? It means to, to do, to do what you are supposed to do. So when you fulfill the commandments of our Lord God, you are doing what our Lord God wants you to do. And that is something that each and every one of us, true Christians, follower of our Lord Jesus Christ, should do. And it is not to show others that we are doing it, but to show our Lord God that we are following his teachings and his commandments. Why is it important for us to do it, especially now? Especially now when we are at this point, wherein there are a lot of our brothers and sisters who are still in need and what is happening to them and does our lord god know that all of these things are happening to them these misfortunes and troubles are happening to them let's read what's written in isaiah chapter 59 and the verses 14 up to 16 our courts oppose the righteous and justice is nowhere to be found truth stumbles in the streets and honesty has been outlawed yes Truth is gone, and anyone who renounces evil is attacked. The Lord looked and was displeased to find that there was no justice. He was amazed to see that no one intervened to help the oppressed. So he himself stepped in to save them with his strong arm, and his justice sustained him. Now, beloved brothers and sisters, there is nothing that we can hide from our Lord God. And our Lord God sees everything that is happening in this world. Our Lord God actually saw and he was displeased that there was no justice in this world. He was even amazed at one point that no one intervened to help the oppressed. So even though there are courts, there are lawyers, there are judges, but then the courts oppose the righteous. The courts have been corrupted. Justice cannot be found. Even the truth has been twisted. Honesty has been outlawed. This has been what's happening time and time again. And our Lord God saw it. So when our Lord God saw and he was displeased, 
that there was no justice. And what truly amazed them is that no one intervened to help the oppressed. So if our Lord God saw that there is a need to help those who are in need, should we be among those who will just sit idly by and do nothing? That is why our Lord God wants us to be reminded of these verses, these teachings that has been written in the Holy Scriptures. These are not ancient artifacts that should just be for educational purposes only. This serves as reminders for each and every one of us so that even though we have our day-to-day -day life, we go to school, we go to work, we do our business every day, spend time with our loved ones and friends, but on top of it all, we should always remember that we are here because God continues to give us life and strength. And if, if that is the case, then it is only but fitting that we do our part and follow God's teachings and his commandments and do what he commands. And that is one of the things that we should always remember. We should always remember to do good. We should always remember to help others, especially those who are in need. Now, why is it important that we do this? And especially now, if when you talk about those who are truly helping those who are in need, the numbers are probably just getting smaller and smaller. People who actually genuinely help others are becoming rarer and rarer. Why is that? Why is that happening? Especially if there are those who knows the teachings, a lot of people knows what's written in the Bible. A lot of people are even preaching the words of God written in the Holy Scripture. Let's read what is written here in, this is actually, I think I was able to, let me just, this is uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 17 to 24. If it is the Lord's will, I hope that I will be able to send Timothy to you soon so that I may be encouraged by news about you. He is the one, the only one who shares my feelings and who really cares about you. Everyone else is concerned only with their own affairs, not with the cause of Jesus Christ. Now, beloved brothers and sisters, Timothy is one of the youngest preachers then during the time of the apostles. When he was sent by Apostle Paul, he was truly, genuinely happy to send Timothy to the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because he wants to know the good news about the other disciples in different parts. And he is the only one, according to Apostle Paul, who shares my feelings and who really cares about you. Even though Timothy, preaching the words of our Lord God at a very young age compared to the apostles and the other preachers, he shared the love, the compassion, the sympathy, and the divine duty to preach the words of our Lord God. But others were also there who knows the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. But according to Apostle Paul, everyone else is concerned only with the, their own affairs, not with the cause of Jesus Christ. Now, isn't that true even during our time when there are only but a few of us who are following the pristine doctrines of our Lord Jesus Christ. And even though we are few, we are still being vilified. We are still being persecuted, oppressed, prosecuted. And then when others are supposed to be fulfilling their duties too, but they were, they're only concerned and they're only distracted with their own affairs. What only concerns them is their best interest. That's why there are those who separated and went on a different path. There are those who started their own religion. There are those who started a different 
way of thinking or others that just simply vanished, kept silent, did not do anything at all. That is why, brothers and sisters, we are being reminded. If others are concerned with their own interest, we should be concerned with the cause of our Lord Jesus Christ. The cause of our Lord Jesus Christ have been time and time again brought out into the Holy Scriptures so that we will know what is the cause of our Lord Jesus Christ in the different dispensation of time. When God calls his people to fulfill a certain cause, that cause is what we should all do in order for us to fulfill God's will. What is the cause of our Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ, especially now in our time, when we have seen the more complete fulfillment of God's prophecy. Let us read what is written here in the last verse in Isaiah chapter 1 and the verse 17. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Defend the oppressed. Take up the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. These things that we have witnessed are not mere coincidences. They are there. Because God is showing us the sign that this is the more complete fulfillment of the prophecy. So that we will have no doubt that even though we are going through fiery trials, it is all but part of God's will. So that he will be able to see who among those who receive God's teachings will remain faithful. And who among those will be kept silent. Who among those will be fearful who among those will turn away, have doubts, or completely deny our Lord Jesus Christ. For the very few who will remain faithful, let us learn to do right. Let us seek justice because there is injustice. There are people who need justice. When there are people who are oppressed, it is our duty to defend those people. When we take up a cause, because there are a lot of causes. When we take up a cause, it should be the cause of our Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. In our time, this cause that we are being called to is the cause of the fatherless and the widow. When we were given the sign, the fatherless and the widow pleaded. We heard it. We saw it. Now this is our turn to continue following God's teachings and his commandments. Even if we are scattered in different parts of the world, even if we are using this technology that has been given to us in order for us to hear the words of our Lord God, all of these things are put into place so that we may be able to continue sojourning in this world and also continue following God's teachings worshiping his name, praising his name, doing good to others, helping those who are in need. Brothers and sisters, for as long as we have life and strength, let us never forget where this life and strength came from. And once we are able to understand where it came from, then we will be thankful and grateful so that we may show compassion and sympathy towards others. And we will do our part so that we may elevate them in their suffering, in their situation and condition, and be used as God's instrument so that his will be done. Let us all stand and we shall pray. Our loving Father in heaven, thank you so much, O oh God, because we know that you are always near to us. Even though we are filled with iniquities, we are filled with shortcomings before your sight. Instead of judging us, instead of casting us away, instead of punishing us with the same severity of our sins, you are compassionate and you showed sympathy. You showed mercy. You cleanse us of our sins and allow us to be worthy to hear your words, your teachings and your commandments let it penetrate in our hearts, in our minds. 
so that we may be able to understand what you want us to do. And more importantly, we will have that desire to fulfill all your teachings and your commandments. Father in heaven, look down on your people, those who are with us, those who are listening at this moment in every household where your children resides. Father, please send forth the Holy Spirit. Help us every day of our lives. Give us the health that we need. If there are those who are sick, Father, please manifest your miracles in our lives so that we may be healed, so that we may receive your blessings that we will use not only for us to continue sojourning in this world, but most especially to use the blessings that you give us so that we may help others, especially those who are in need. Father in heaven, we know that all of these things that are happening to us, no matter how painful, no matter how sorrowful, all of these are part of your plan so that your will be done, so that your people will be able to continue our, with our sojourn and reach our destination and receive the grace of salvation. May you continue to help us every day, protect us from all harm and danger, and most especially send forth the Holy Spirit that will remind us of your teachings so that we will always apply them in our life. May you bless our brothers and sisters who are persecuted, those who are oppressed, those who are in hiding, those who are in jail. Father, it is our faith that at your appointed time, all of this will come to pass and all of us will be vindicated to continue worshiping and praising your holy name. May you continue to help those who are helping others. Give us the things that we need, especially the blessing, so that we may be able to continue using it in helping those who are in need. All of these things we humbly ask in the name of our Lord Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.